Okay. Whew, a girl is feeling good. Welcome back. Hi, you guys. This is Saved Not Soft. My name is Emmy Moore, and I am the host of this beautiful, wonderful podcast. And thank you guys for being here, for being patient with me. Last week, we didn't have an episode. I apologize for that. And we're going to kind of talk about that today. Um, But I'm so excited to be back to share with you guys what God has shared with me these past two weeks and what he's been pouring into me. Some things that are going to change. It's not going to be end of the world-ish, you know. Um, But if you're new here, thank you for joining me and us so excited for you to be here and this is just a podcast where we talk about all things jesus navigate navigating what navigating your life with christ and overall just how to be a christian in a world that ain't so christian quite honestly so very excited you're here so uh let's talk about last week because I got to share why I wasn't able to post a video last week besides me crying on Instagram, which we will not be talking about. Uh, but basically what I've been kind of going through um, and how I'm going to abide by what the Lord is telling me right now. And I got to do what he say. And I'm going to tell y'all what he told me. So I am in a place right now, or I was in a place last week where I was just go, 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 wake up, work, sleep, work. I'm just work, work, work. And I'm self-employed. And besides for me working, I feel like I'm still working. This podcast, yes, is amazing and it's ministry, but it's still work at the end of the day. And I felt like I was rushing my podcast, putting out an episode every week and writing a message that not only takes a lot of time, but it also takes a lot of prayer and a lot of wisdom to do. And I felt like I was rushing wisdom, which is something that's never good. (laughs) Because if it gets to a point to where I feel like I can't even discern what I'm saying, why would I deliver that to you guys? And I don't, I don't believe, um, my first four episodes were in any way, um, wrong or terrible or not from God. I actually think those episodes were great. Last week's episode, whenever I was trying to record it, I kid you not guys, I sat on this couch and it there was only one day that I could do this, that I could film it. I was just stressing and overthinking it and I was sitting on this couch and I tried to film it three times and halfway between each one, I just bawled, just cried my eyes out and I literally told God, God, I don't even feel like you're in this because I'm just rushing it and I have so much stuff I'm thinking about and so much stuff I need to do and so much stuff I'm worried about and he just told me don't post that week and I was so upset by it because one thing about me is I like to be consistent. I don't like to break my word and I said, well, God, I I told them I got to put something out like I told everyone I'm going to put out this episode this week and he's like, no, you're not. I was like, dang. Okay, (laughs) so obviously didn't have an episode last week and I want to tell you guys what God shared with me. So I've been go, go, go. I'm self-employed. That's already enough within itself. Um, I am my own team. I don't have anyone who helps me. Uh, Actually, I'm a liar. I have two people that help me. Shout out my management, Jen and Lacey. Love you if you guys are watching this. Uh, I do have a management which helps me with like the... um, social media stuff that I do and like getting collabs and uh, sponsors and whatnot. So that, that is a great thumbs up who does all the emailing that has helped me a lot. But besides that, uh, filming, being a social media, y'all, I don't even know. I can't even give you a title of what I do. I just like to say that I'm a creative. Um, I run this podcast, this small little ministry, um, and also the social media for that. I also do social, social media marketing and manage it, management, excuse me. Oh my goodness. For other companies, I also do graphic designing. And then I also do social media content creation for myself, making advertisements for other brands. And you know, a girl got to have a social life on top of that and go to the gym and eat and rest. And I had no time to rest. I, the only time I had to rest was when I went to sleep and I was still getting my eight hours in, but that girl, that was not enough. Um, I was go, go, go all day. The only time I got to lay down was when I hit my bed and 
I left last week to go to LA to visit um, a friend of mine and we went to service that night. They, um, there was a church service we went to. It was on a Monday and it's a lot of kids. I don't, I hate, I hate saying kids, young adults, my age, um, just worshiping, hearing the word. And I went and I knew I needed to go because my soul needed to be filled. Basically what I was going through was I feel like I consistently pour into others, but I don't feel like a lot is being poured into me because I work, 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 serve, serve, serve. Like this, what I'm doing, I'm serving. This is a, this is an act of me serving. I also serve in high school ministry at my church, just serving, 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 working, working, working. And I'm literally running dry. And I went to God and I just bowed before him and I said, I am thirsty. I am tired. I am hungry. I don't know how to manage my time. And I was in the presence of him whenever I was worshiping him with um, people my age and just in the presence of him. And I was just so focused on him. He said, you feel that? That is rest. And that's what you need right now, Emmy. I don't know what made you think you could do all these things by yourself. And I, and I think it's because I see the potential of where things could take me that I get so excited. And I just want to full force it. And he says, you need to calm down. <laughs> you literally need to calm down and rest in me. And, um, and, and God just reminded me a lot of who I am, his will for me, what he has planned for me. And just tell me, I need you to rest if you want, if you want to receive everything that I've promised you. And he says, you can't do it all on your own. I can, though. You don't have control of every, everything. Just lay it at my feet. I will heal it. I will take care of it. The things that you are longing for, the things that I promise you will come. But it's going to be in diligent matter. And I just sat before God and I just let him restore me and say, you know what, God? Like, I am going to take time to rest I'm also going to take time into my ministry because this is something I want to fully dive into, like genuinely in general, <laughs> like my ministry, just ministry in general is something that um, I'm wanting. This is my goal at the end of the day is to be full time in ministry. And um, God saying, you know, I know you see the vision that I gave you, but I need you to slow down because you need to be refined and you need to be humbled. God literally told me he was like, you need to be humbled. I don't know why you're moving this fast. You shouldn't be moving this fast because you don't know what you're doing all the way around. You're your own team. I will send people who will help you. And so I'm just trusting him right now. And I go all that to say, all of that whole thing. Sorry, Loki kind of vented to you guys. But um, I go all that to say that I'm going to be posting biweekly. Uh, so I won't be posting every week, but I'll be posting every other week. So I make sure the messages that the Lord is wanting me to tell you guys is thoroughly prayed throughout and also mended correctly, tended correctly, sorry, that it is tended and taken care of, um, that this is from God's mouth, not mine, that I just pray and give wisdom into what I'm telling you guys. And, um, I, this is something that's going to be amazing in the long run. Once I get someone who could help me edit set up whatever it may be um once there's a team in the near, near future okay we'll do once a once a week but as of right now I can't do everything myself and I need to slow down and I'm gonna slow down because that's what God's telling me to do and for his promise to go through the way that it needs to I have to uh, I have to be obedient to him so I'm fine with with doing once every two weeks. And of course, I'm still going to be active on social media pages and whatnot, just sitting down and editing an hour long episode gets crazy uh, sometimes. And I think what I'm going through right now is actually going into this topic perfectly that we're going to talk about today. And I was going to talk about this last week, obviously delayed it till today and just giving my yes to God. And we're going to be talking about God's will today and 
what is the will for each and every single single one of us? Because we always hear, God has a plan for you. There's a plan. Everything happens for a reason. And I know how, you're just going to hear me say this a lot. Know how there's two voices, said this in the last few episodes, discerning God's voice and the enemy's voice. There's also different wills. And here's the catch. There's three not two, there's one. There's God's will, our will, and the enemy's will. And today, we're going to be just completely focused and tuned in on God. Because we don't need to talk about that other stuff today. So this is going to be a two-part episode. First part, we're talking about God's will for us. And the second part, um, we're going to be talking about our will and um, the enemy's will that that is instilled in our lives. But first, to understand everything We need to know God's character and who he is and why these things are designed intentionally for us. And um, the everything happens for a reason is the title of this message because isn't it funny how it's just a term that everybody uses? Like that's a term I use. I think that was a term I just used the other day. Everything happens for a reason. And it does. That's that's completely true. Everything does happen for a reason, but it's not always God's reasoning. And immediately when the term everything happens for a reason is said, it's immediately associated with God's character. What do you mean by that, Emmy? Meaning every time something bad happens in somebody's life or tragic or unwanted, whatever happens under the sun is immediately put on God. God, I can't believe since I drank 15 White Claws and 15 shots of Casa Amigos last night that I woke up this morning almost having alcohol poisoning. God, why would you do this to me? Well, God, everything happens for a reason. It's all God's reasoning. God didn't ask you to get faded last night, you know? <laughs> and I, I want to stop blaming God on things that we're doing or even stuff that the enemy is planting. And that's the stuff we're going to be kind of talking about next week. But uh, that's kind of the background of why I wanted to say this title. Everything happens for a reason, but it's not always God's reasoning. And today we're going to talk about the reasonings of God, the will of God, what God does intend for us. What does he say to us? What is his character? And I, I truly don't think you will ever understand God's will if you don't understand his characteristics first. Um, what, how did I explain this? Have you ever texted a friend? Okay, everyone knows this. If you text someone, it's always it's always different texting someone than talking to them in person. But if you know who you're texting, it's a lot easier. So have you ever texted someone and like not know who they was? So like, say if I wanted to book a hair appointment and I just found a new hairdresser and I got to like text her like, oh my gosh, like she don't know who, who I am. I don't know who she is. And you're, you're just like, hey girly, exclamation point. I heard you do this bomb look. I want to know if you could get me into this. Like you text so differently, but then whenever you see them in person, you're like, oh, like this is chill, whatever. Do you, do you catch what I'm throwing? And, um, where was I going with that? (laughs) Oh, I remember, sorry. I like what's so off track, but, um, you know, whenever you meet someone in person, the context is so completely different. And I think when people read the Bible, they read it so sternly and scary. Same with understanding what God's will is like, well, that sounds scary. He sounds like a terrible guy when it's like, you don't even know how he is. So you won't even understand the things that he says because you don't know the context of his character. So we're first going to talk about that God's character and, um, why things things happen the way that they need to happen <laughs> so sorry I'm kind of geeking how I went so off track and oh gosh but yeah I think there's a lot of situations where we cry God why me reveal yourself reveal the situation take it out for me and just cry out to, to God and I think instead of asking why me We need to start asking, why not me? An important question, actually, more is to ask, God, can I trust you? Instead of the why me, can I trust you, actually? I don't know where this is coming from, but can I trust you in this? 
And it's hard to understand suffering and pain. One of the biggest questions, even on Christians ask me this all the time. If your sky daddy is so great and powerful and just, then why is there suffering and pain? And it's, it really irks me (laughs) that people ask me this question so much, but Lord, give me grace, give them grace. Um, I, I have to understand that like people really don't understand the depth of that question and the depths of who God is and why we have freedom, why there is suffering. If God is so good, if God talks about being love and just and good and holy, why would I think he's good if I go through suffering and pain? It's a, it's a genuine question. I used to have that, that question when I was a non-believer. And well, I think the question we have to ask is, well, where does suffering and pain come from? It's a byproduct of God's love. Some of y'all are like, huh? What does that mean? So God's, one of God's greatest attributes and characteristics is love. I've told y'all many times that the number one thing I want to go back to in this podcast, just every message is just to go back to the fact that God is love. I do not want you guys to ever forget that. And God loves us so much that he let us experience freedom. He gave us authority of choice. And from that, because of his love, he gave us freedom. And the byproduct of that is suffering and pain. Not something he created intentionally because he was like, I hate my creation, but because he, he loves us so much that he wanted to experience a true genuine relationship with us because it wouldn't be love if you forced a group of people to, to love you. Like think of that. Everyone knows this love is sacrifice. Love is a choice. Love entails freedom. And you can't love someone if you're not in a place to reject. If you're not in a place to receive or reject. If you're just in a place to be like, okay, I, whatever you say, and just under complete influence and control of one, that is not love because love entails freedom. And this is something God had to do. Because since he is love, he couldn't do it no other way. It is actually impossible that God, uh, God literally could not make a world without humans that couldn't make their own choices because God is love and he can't deny himself. And so um, when you understand that, you know, God, you didn't only create the heavens, the universe and the earth just so it could it could give you all the glory, but so I can willingly give you glory because I genuinely love you because I choose you because you chose me first already. We know that God chose us first, but I, I am experiencing your love and I'm going to love you endlessly. Like that, that's what God loves so much. And to the people who don't understand that, just flip your perspective. Imagine if you had a mass majority of people and they only loved you because you said that they had to. Is that genuine? I don't think it's that hard to grasp. (laughs) That's just me though. That's just me. Um, I tend to flip my perspective a lot on things. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's a verse and it's James one, two through four. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and be made mature and complete, not lacking anything. So we also know that even suffering and pain itself, how terrible it may be, like this is how great God is and how his love is so amazing because He knew that, okay, from this love, people are going to turn away. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be loss. There's going to be pain. But since I love my children so, so much, 
I'm even going to produce more love from that. Does that make sense? Like, I love my children so much. I know they're going to go through this, but it's going to produce perseverance. Their suffering and pain will produce something. It will not run empty. And that is just a prime example that good always wins. The, the, the goodness of God will always prevail, which goes into my next topic is what is God's will overall? If I were to put it in a sentence, I'm going to put it, do I want to say it all the way? Mm-hmm. Why not? I'm going to tell you guys God's will, the enemy's will and our will. And this is something if you're, I know some of y'all like to take notes. If you're taking notes, put it at the top. You're going to need this next week too, because this is going to be kind of the, the thing we're going back to on this. So God's will, our will, the enemy's will. Got it, y'all? First thing, God's will is something that ultimately prevails. Our will is making choices that glorify ourselves. And the enemy's will is an impermanent being causing permanent destruction. When I put that thing together, I thought I was spitting some heat. I said, oh, what, what does it mean? God ultimately prevails. He always going to win at the end of it. Every tongue shall confess. Every knee shall bow. Doesn't mean he, um, because, because freedom and then that gets confusing. I, I understand how I made it just, that might have just contradicted one another right now. So look, God ult- ultimately has control over everything. But since we are here on earth, we have the authority to make our own decisions, which is what freedom. So if we choose to be apart from God, he will reveal himself. And that's when every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. Not because he's forcing us to, but because he's God. Imagine being in the presence of God. Even even if someone who has denied him all of their life and after this life that they have lived, seeing the presence of God, you think they're going to stand there? <laughs> Girl, you better bow. You better bow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, God created this world um, not because... Uh, or freedom, not just because it was his cup of tea, but because he had to. It was a it was a byproduct of his love, and from that came pain and suffering, and then from that comes perseverance. And love ultimately wins and prevails. And what sets God apart from everyone else, every other false god, even Satan himself, is that God grows our affection towards Him not by His position, but by His influence. He is influential. He is in power. He is in position by his influence. Who else would send his own son for our sins? I I like to always go back to the cross because besides creation, this is the biggest miracle. And yet it is so overplayed. And people just, it just go over people's head. Like, oh yeah, I know on Easter, Jesus died for our sins. And then three days later he rose from the dead like it was nothing do you guys not understand the depths of that this is how good God is this is how much God loves us how loving of a God our father is to where he sent his own son to die for me and you have you guys ever had anyone die for you I'm a kid with a bug I haven't except for God what God would humble himself before his own creation and die for them. Would you do that? For the people you don't like? Think of the, your worst enemy, the person who has done you the most dirty in your whole entire life. Would you die for them instantly? Without even thinking. God humbl- humbly sent himself down, his son, to die on a cross for our sins that go against what he says because he loves us that much. Understand the significance of the cross. Understand the significance of God's love. And you'll understand his will for you. And God is just here to say, I'm doing all of this because I love you. 
every single ounce of it is our love because that's who God is. God is literally love. I love in the Bible how it says God is love. The definition of love is literally God. Was it first John four, eight? Whoever does not, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Yeah. I love that God is love. It makes everything make sense. Even think about it in like relationships. God is a relational God. Relationships are required of one element. What is that? Love. When you're in a relationship with your, don't take this the wrong way, like brother or sister, like, or a friend or your mom or whoever it is, like a, like a relationship, like a, you, you have a solid relationship with them. It, what holds that together is love, which is also God. That is the strongest force is, is God's love. It's just love. Thank you, Jesus. I just love love. And uh, one of the books in the Bible that talks about love the most, uh, me and my best friend Annika like to call it the love books, and it's 1 Corinthians, and especially 1 Corinthians 13. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envy. It is not boast. It is not proud. I'm going to pause. The word love is said many times throughout this whole passage. And every time it says love, I just want you to think of God. Because it's describing what love is. And since God is love, this is also describing who God is. It is not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. I just like whenever you understand what love is, you'll understand who God is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envy. It is not boast. It is not proud. The things that are happening in your life, is it out of love? The everything happens for, for a reason. This just happened. Was that out of love? Do you see God in that? God, did you take this out of my life because you love me and you have something better for me? Love comes in many forms, but from God, it's always apparent what it is. I think this is fundamental knowledge that we need to really focus on reintroducing back into the church on God's character, his love, what he is, what he can and cannot do, what what type of God he is, how he loves us, how he longs and searches for us. Because a lot of people will go straight to finding out what their purpose is, but completely miss the character. A lot of people will worry about what is God's will for me? What is what is going to happen in my life? What is my purpose? What a, what is my calling? But won't go to church, won't pray, open up their Bible, fast, serve, won't do anything to grow the kingdom of God. Everyone wants to go straight to the purpose but forgets to pursue the person that's providing that purpose. That is freaking nasty. That is actually an abomination what I just said that is so nasty everyone wants to know what's going on in my life God what's your plan he's like do you know me first you're wanting the agenda and not a relationship how do you expect me to provide for you if you don't know my voice 2 Peter 3 9 The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, instead he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This is his direct will towards everybody. He is not slow in keeping his promise. He's saying the will I have for you, oh baby, is coming. It's coming. I'm not going to break that. I'm needing you to be patient with me as I am patient with you. In me, you will not perish. But I need you to come repent. 
I need you to come. This is his direct will. This is God's words, not mine. It says it. It says right there. And God is going to get his will regardless. We get to say yes or no for what he has planned for us. You guys realize that scripture starts and ends the same? Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. It always starts and ends in the garden. God does not change. What we read in those, in those books from Gen- uh, Genesis to Revelation, all of the stories in between is God uniting us with him And all the things that we have done against him because of our rebellion. That is what these stories are. Is These are real people. This isn't just made up stories. Real people who really lived, who were before God. Like the gospels, oh my gosh, people who actually were in fellowship with Jesus. Oh my gosh, imagine that. I was just watching The Chosen and just seeing how... People, because it just came out on Netflix, if you guys don't know what The Chosen is, it is amazing. Every episode you will cry because who the, the man who acts, um, who's the actor for Jesus, is anointed and blessed because God moved through him. I didn't know acting could, could, could move me like that, but oh, girl, did. And um, just the interactions that us as humans have with him that's what that's what that whole story is and god god like how we said god is love god is relational god wants a relationship with you he is not satisfied by his own company we are a necessity he wants us he longs for us he searches for us he wants to provide for us if god was satisfied with just himself we would not be here even before we were created, there was angels in the heavens accompanied with him. It was him, the son, and the spirit, the angels. Where do you think all of these archangels, where do you think Lucifer fell from? All before the hands of God. God is not satisfied with his own company, so he needs us. He wants us to be in relationship with him. I wrote this down. His will for us is to be in relationship with him inside of his parameters, not because he's a dictator, but because his love is unconditional and ours is conditional. Not saying that the Lord, you know, doesn't have conditions, but his love over exceeds our definition of what love is. He loves us on a level that we cannot love him on. His love is undescribable. It's something that our brains literally can't comprehend. Imagine comprehending all of the characteristics of who God is. And love can't occur outside of the parameters of freedom. It can't. Talked about this earlier. Love requires a choice. Love requires freedom. God wants to set you free. He wants you to be free. He wants you to choose him, but he's going to he's going to leave that up to you. He's going to invite you in his home. He's going he's gonna to knock at your door until you open up. But never is it, I'm coming in. <laughs> he says, may I come in? A gentleman, may I come into your house? May I sit with you? May I prepare this meal for you in your house and wash your feet and pray for you and save you and deliver you? That's who our God is. He is a healer. He is a restorer. He's a doctor. He's a carpenter. He's a teacher. And he is love. That's who God is. And I think um, I, I understand things better when you tell me the opposite of it. This is just how I think. Don't judge. But. I think it's interesting to know the things that God can't do. Earlier I said God can't deny himself and God can't make a world where this is where he has creatures that don't have freedom because it's out of his character. 
all of these things go are contrary to his very character. So I'm going to tell you guys a few things that God can't do. And I got verses to back it up. God can't lie. Oh, so if you're wondering like, God, what if you're lying to me? I'm scared. He's like, well, I can't lie because it says in Hebrews 6, 18, God did, did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled to make hold of the hope set before us may greatly um, may be greatly encouraged. Next one, Romans 3, 4. Not at all. Let God be true. And every human being is a liar at it, as it is written so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. Titus 1, 2. In the hope of eternal life, which God who does not lie promised before the beginning of time. Oh my gosh. And how do, how do I know that God's not lying about that? <laughs> well, God also can't deny himself too. If we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself. Second Timothy 2.13. He can not deny what he says. His character is so strong and po- prominent and God is truth that he cannot even deny the things that he says. Imagine. It's hard for my brain to understand that. But it it wants me to give him more of the honor and the praise and the glory. And from that, God also can't change. Every Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father, from the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. James 1, 17. Revelation 1, 8. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, whoever says, Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And those promises he has for you, that he's spoken over you, that you choose to live in, he doesn't break them. If you are living in God's will, he cannot break the promises over you. We're the ones who break them. I know some of y'all are so hurt right now. I've had God tell me multiple times I was in situations to where it it was going to kill my calling, quite honestly. And I've had God go up to my face and tell me, If you are involved with this or with this person or with this act, you will never receive the promise that I have given you because of my actions, not because of his. So God will always hold up his end of a promise. And um, Leviticus 28, 44 says, yet in spite of this, when they are in land of their enemies, I will not reject them or, um, or Aber, Aber, what does that say? Them, as so as to destroy them completely, breaking my covenant with them. I am the Lord their God. Covenant is a fancy word for promise. Um, to you guys who don't know biblical terms like that, the word covenant means promise. Same word. Um, also, Psalms eighty nine thirty four. I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. It cannot be violated. It cannot be broken. When God says a promise, he means a promise. And from that, God will never, ever stop loving you. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. 2 Timothy 1, 9. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. He loved us so much and has never stopped that he gave it. He gave his love to us before anyone else has seen our faces we love because he first loved us first john 4 19 he chose us first he loves us first and it always starts and ends with him and as we close last point i'm going to say here and we'll be done is okay i know the character of god i know his will for me i know His will will ultimately prevail. And I want to be in the presence of God and stay in his will. How do I do that, Emmy? Five things. Pray, worship, meditate on the word, serve, and fast. Pray. That is open communication you have with God. How do you grow a relationship with someone? You talk to them. You get to know them. You sit down with them. That's what praying is. Sit before the Lord. Ask him questions. Speak to him. He'll speak to you. 
worship. Worship is for our benefit. Not so we're like, God, I, I have to worship because of you. It's worshiping is because you love God. It's actually an outward expression to show our love for God and exalting him to a higher place and meditate on the word, read the word. Um, how it's literally called the word. How are you going to hear something without a word? I want God to speak to me. There's a book full of words in it that speaks. So open it. If you want to know God's will for you, it's all in a book. And the only thing that's stopping you from, from that is what? Ignorance? Impatience? Boredom? Are you going to let that stop you from receiving the full promises that God has in your life? I would open that Bible if I were you. And then four, serve. Stewardship is so important to serve the kingdom of God. What is one of the greatest commandments? Love one another before yourselves. To be selfless. I mean, when Jesus was here, that's all he exemplified. How can we be more like him? How can we um, remain in him to act like him? To serve one another, to love one another. You guys, it's holiday season right now. There are people outside freezing. If there's someone outside of your canes or local in and out or i don't know where y'all from um what other stuff is there popeyes mcdonald's whatever it may be get them a sandwich get them a hot coffee serve one another love one another if you have jackets or clothes you don't wear in your closet give it to someone in need there are people who who are wanting help who need help don't be so self so selfish it's time to be selfless. So, it, and especially in the holiday season, it's the perfect time. It's cold outside and um, just serving will give you a much bigger reward than, than riches. It's kingdom riches that you'll be receiving. And it's not, oh, if I serve, then God will give me a Lamborghini. No, it doesn't work like that. God is going to give you treasures that are far more important than a Lamborghini or a new camera or some easy slides. God's going to give you something that is going to ex excel his kingdom. And then the last one is fast. Uh, I fasted last month for three weeks. Oh my gosh. It was my first time uh, fasting a, a, a long duration. And let me tell you, it was probably the best thing I've ever did in my entire life. That The amount of things that were revealed to me. God's voice is so there <laughs> God's voice is transparent it is so easy to hear him and just be in the presence of him because what fasting is is that you're relying on the food of the Lord being spiritually fed and since we feed ourselves physically so so much not even just through like food but just throughout everything else of this world that our spirit needs to be fed as well and if you want to hear the transparency and um and who God is, and what he's speaking over your life, I really encourage you to fast, because it's something that is commanded for us to do, so that is my little, my little points, <laughs> I'm looking at my camera right now, and it says I have one more minute, so I'm gonna try to chop it up real quick, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, thank you for joining me again, and just sticking around, I won't see you next week, but I'll see you the week after, and uh, so blessed that you guys are here, and um, just pray that the Lord carries you and moves you guys um through this whole week with just grace and mercy and just loves you with um the most of his ability and i care and i love each and every single one of you so 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 much um i'm so blessed um i'm just so blessed by god and that he's using me to to share everything with you guys so stay blessed not stress love you guys so so much have a great week uh i'll see you two tuesdays from now Bye, you guys.